Today I'm joined by Olga Natskakula from the Horizon X Consulting and thank you Olga for joining us and maybe let's start with like a couple of words from you about yourself and also the company. Sure, uh, thank you very much for having me today. So a couple of words about the company. So Horizon X Consulting is an innovation strategic consulting that uh, was just incorporated this year. But the main purpose of the business is to provide strategic advice on emerging technology and disruptive technologies to large organizations through the services of strategy, like strategic advice or kind of um, providing the full um, assessment of capabilities of innovation culture in the organization and then creating a full roadmap of what we can do or how the organization wants to grow in the three to five years or even, um, even beyond that horizon. And also we provide the corporate training. So we will be probably talking today about the role of upskilling and really ensuring that our employees are part of the entire um, innovation and emerging tech journey. So we also provide those sort of services. Uh, but in essence, we are a consulting company. Main focus is on innovation, on open innovation, culture of experimentation and innovation, um, including training, prototyping and emerging tech. Lovely. And you, you mentioned the culture of innovation and experimentation, and I think it's quite crucial for the companies in the today's fast paced business world. And how, could you share how companies should face this challenge and what outcomes should they expect if they do? Sure. So what I would like to start with um, with one thing, just to highlight that innovation is not a tech for tech movement anymore. So the entire buzz and hype about culture of innovation and experimentation has um, has the right to be there because it's not anymore like cloud adoption or moving data to the cloud that only tech people can understand. The innovation spans currently, as you said, in the, this dynamic business environment with the emerging tech that is getting more and more into, into business world, it spans across the entire organization. Legal, procurement, marketing, sales, operation, HR, no one is like no, no one can really stay behind this technology movement. Like all of those organizational um, departments or the services, no matter whether this is sales support, operational support, can really benefit from what is available in terms of technology today. And uh, so why this culture of innovation and experimentation? Because previously when when the tech was only for tech people, you know, those kind of nerds sitting yeah, somewhere yeah. in the offices, like somewhere no one knew where they were sitting. That was the kind of a concept of collaboration. They were sharing knowledge, experimenting with technology. No one knew what they were doing. They were kind of like, you know, the, the hype was there, but now the hype is out there. And we kind of need to need to learn how to approach this innovation and how to approach the experiment, the, the entire process of experimentation with those technologies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when we are and talking, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. I please, please finish your your answer because I I want to ask also about like a culture mindset shift. But like let's let's finish that first. Sure. Like the culture mindset shift is is enormous. And yeah, absolutely. Let's <laughs> jump into it um in a second. So, the 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 culture build. And I think that what's really really important is to start from the top. Is to have mm -hmm. the leaders committed to it that yes we want to have innovation and make them champion the cause of innovation and really be the true leaders uh to innovation leading by examples that walking the talk it's not just oh we want to be innovative we want to be collaborative but then it's just those words somewhere and those words are like becoming buzzwords that you know yeah. um or there is another I mean, convention for those kind of like talks but i don't want to i don't want to say it out loud but yeah it's the, the it's the entire concept of of uh, of experimentation of innovation but the support promotion but also recognition of mm -hmm. people who are part of this culture of innovation and experimentation has to come from the top has to come from the leaders and then the other part is clear vision and strategy in terms of innovation because we can um what we 
also can observe at the moment is that this hype is so high that everyone is just wants to like jump onto this technology and just implement you know cool toys you know we want to yeah. have toys mm -hmm. oh my god vr ar gen ai and everything but we have to have a vision like where where we want to be like what do we want to do with it where is the company like uh, going with this technology what is the company growth that we want to support with technology what is the market expansion we want to achieve what are the new products or services we want to do or what are the new target groups we want to achieve so that there is like a true case to experiment with the technology there is a true problem to be solved because what we are also seeing is that challenge yeah, but what, what like the, yeah, but what we can do, like, yeah, but we are starting with the use case. We are starting with the business problem to solve. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it's it's a kind of like completely complete shift of the mindset, as you as you yeah. as you said before. But we need to have we need to have a vision. We need to have a clear strategy. We need to have a leadership commitment, and uh, all of that will you know help us incredibly to empower our employees to be part of this innovation journey with the company with us and um and really step in into that uh, that dynamic mo the dynamic world of change yeah yeah exactly and coming back to the mindset mindset uh, shift like there is lots of companies with like old history employees working for for many like yes the like an old approach to to stuff old fashioned i would call that and and should uh, organizations to to go through this like a mindset shift to actually look for the, look at the outside like try to find the partners and suppliers who could help with like embracing that that new culture or should they should they focus on dealing with that internally oh this is fabulous question um so my background is in the top tier uh banks and uh, I worked in the probably the most traditional function and department in the entire banking industry, which is risk. Mm -hmm. So and and that was a bank with 150 years tradition. So I understand traditional way of working. I understand traditional business models. Um, but there is a potential in people. People see the change coming to them from the outside they also read newspapers they all maybe digital newspapers these days they also read blogs they have access to all of the tools so they're not just blind employees that going to the workplace just to do from a to b and and go out they also see what is happening out there but with lack of opportunities with lack of engagement with lack of recognition they will not step up and they will not do anything extra for the company. They need to see that there is this recognition and acknowledgement of what is going out there so they can come up with ideas, they can come up with certain solutions or let's test the new technologies, let's do some experimentation, etc. And I've seen myself that shift, like people who are like for years, 30, 50 years in the bank, 50, like there was like, yes, there was, there was an example of, 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 of 50 wow. year tenure in the bank doing regulations, doing the operational risk management, assessment, the assessment of credit scoring, et cetera, dealing with the papers, financial statements of the clients, et cetera. But even they 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 can see they want to do good for the customers they they see that those technologies can speed up um decision making process the decisions to yes or to no but at least the customer knows and can can operate the frustration is not only coming because of the years of experience the frustration is coming because they see what frustrates customers they see the length and the uh, and the bureaucracy of the procedures or processes that they don't even understand and they cannot really justify the value of those procedures and and they can come up with fantastic ideas fantastic ideas because the business knowledge they have the knowledge of the customers and and that kind of spirit of change can really um, bring amazing, amazing ideas on how to uh, speed up the processes, how to speed up the decision, um, the, the decision processes. It's it's amazing. So I wouldn't say, oh, go external and find external partners. Mm -hmm. I would say try to get that spirit from the employees, from in, from people who know your business well people who are close to your clients they talk to them on every single like maybe not single day but they talk to them 
often and and they know your business so instead of just going out there and bringing new technology or or thinking that you will bring external knowledge try to foster that culture of innovation and experimentation inside because the knowledge of the business is a great asset of the organization and just going external not recognizing that asset in the in the organization is is a waste it's a it's a loss but i'm not but i'm not saying do not go external don't 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 create open innovation because that's not my point my point is that those um actions external sourcing plus a culture of innovation in, internally built should go should should work together should be implemented simultaneously so we can bring external ideas or external creativity or even external pieces of software because we don't have to build everything in house we can build those software and we can have those problems um identified through this culture of innovation and idea generation plus a little bit of brainstorming how we can test or how we can experiment with new technologies and having that external perspective what is available or what are the startups um in the in the industry that have already experimented with this is this piece of technology so instead of repeating the same maybe we can just go and test what is out there so i would like my message would be do two <laughs> Lovely, thank you very much. And you mentioned the emerging technologies and like a first thought I have in my head is like a quantum computing and AI. And it's like a really revolutionizing industry, especially since ChatGPT became so accessible for, for all of us. And people finally started to be interested in AI, who is on the market for ages already, but like now it's very That's visible. True. And and how do you foresee those technologies actually reshaping the, the workplace structures? And uh, what are the tips you would give to, to the companies, to, um, what they could do to leverage them to, to improve the efficiency, productivity? So my first, my first tip would be find right business cases, the use cases that really help the clients and and really help the problem solving the problems it's not just bringing technology cool toys for boys but yeah. it's it's solving the real problems so what we should be starting with is identifying what problems we want to solve where do we have those inefficient processes or where we want to increase productivity and then through this culture of innovation, idea generation, design thinking, and all of the good stuff that comes with innovation, we can really try to uh, to to come up with a solution, and then we are bringing technology, and then we can say, okay, let's test uh, virtual reality, let's test metaverse, let's test AI, let's test um, Gen AI, because it doesn't have to. I know that the buzz and hype is around Gen AI, but it doesn't have to be Gen AI. It can be applied artificial intelligence or any other open source uh, models. So. I know that this is kind of coming from from the Gen AI and quantum computing kind of um, uh, directions, but it doesn't necessarily mean that we have to be jumping to quantum computing. And besides, even if we want to go with the comp quantum computing direction, maybe we should think how we want to strategize our company growth because quantum computing sure we can test and probably do some use cases in the next one to three years but the true implementation of it and and coming up with the disruptive business models will take more than those three to five years so mm -hmm. we really need to have at least a concept in mind what organization we want to be in those five years time and i understand that this is very challenging in this yeah. dynamic world of technology but who we want to be as a company what is our identity to what customers uh, what customers we want to serve and what market we want to be present at and um, and then we are bringing this technology to solve the problems or to help us build the organization we want to be otherwise it's just bringing great technologies and if we are not doing this through the culture of innovation or open innovation, then we might 
uh, we might find ourselves in a situation that this same exact same technology is used in legal departments, procurement departments and marketing departments, and we are not leveraging the power of all of it. And, and we are even creating more costs or we are increasing the cost of running the business because we do not talk to each other. We do not share the knowledge. And sometimes it might be that the same implementations in different departments takes exactly the same amount of time. We are not learning from each other. We are not learning that we might um, we might do something different next time. So I would definitely say bring the use cases, bring the problems that uh, the organization wants to solve. And it doesn't have to be the, the the customer problem. It can be our own inefficiencies, our own um, internal processes, um, uh, like you know the length, the, the length of it, the kind of mm -hmm. we are just getting stuck in the documents, you know, like oh we don't know where the document is, or we need to review tons of documents. So maybe we can just speed it up. So, and I know that maybe you know defining those problems, it's not that particularly interesting or you know very catchy to 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 tell to the world oh you know we we have 50 page document and you know we want to just you know speed up the reading yeah but this is the problem you know that the fact that yeah. we are spending yeah. this amount of time um of a probably high qualified employee mm -hmm. so maybe instead of just reading through it just give a sense the summary and uh, provide a snapshot or or even like read aloud so that person can even um listen to what is in this document um so the real time is the, the real time of this person is 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 value add activities really like justifying the experience the years of experience mm -hmm. the knowledge education etc so this technology can really like automate those repetitive tasks, those boring tasks, those lengthy tasks that um, uh, that can really like free up the space, mental space as well, the time for doing um, more value added activities. Yeah, that's very interesting because when you were talking about like choosing the technology you want to focus on, I, I thought about like, I think it was end of 2021, beginning of 2022, and all of the companies suddenly started to talk about like a metaverse, meeting in the metaverse, doing stuff with metaverse. And it kind of died. Like, I don't see companies talking yeah. about metaverse projects. And I have a feeling that they spend a lot of money on that, investing that. And it all looked beautiful. But was that really something they should focus on? Uh, or it was just like something fun to play with? And then that's very interesting what you said. Like, it should be important to choose the right technology you should focus on how it's actually going to help you. So, so thank you for that. And we talked about automation. Like, the, the question I have to ask to you. <clears throat> It's about the people, because like we all are stressed all the time for last 10 years, I would say that we're going to be replaced by robots at some point. And and how how companies should should approach that to to have this like a balance between like a, implementing new technologies, embracing using like artificial intelligence, robotics and stuff, but also giving some like a job stability to the employees. That's a very uh, delicate balance between um, adoption of new technologies and ensuring job stability. And this is a very important um, challenge and a question for the organizations to ask. And I see a huge role of the HR department in this as well. So um, HR partnering with business and really like providing this sense of stability is absolutely crucial. But what I would like to say here is that um, Business development is not a new thing. It's of course faster now with the new technologies. It's more dynamic, yes, but it's not new. We've mm. been seeing this since the industry revolution. So what the history is showing us and is telling us that the jobs will stay, but they will be different. They will yeah. not be the same. So. If we are very attached to an idea that we will be working exactly the same job, the same with the, within the same scope of responsibilities, within the same duties for years, that's a kind of mindset that needs to change because that needs to change because that's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. So the jobs will be there, but they will be different. And the question is how we want to how we want to navigate our career through that change. 
and uh, and also how organizations can help employees to navigate through the career changes. So it's it's again on both sides. So one is the expectations of the employees and the other one is the culture of uh, that job stability or risk killing um, that is coming from the organizational side. And I would say like three elements or that need to be um, as a, like need to be included in a kind of HR strategy or the culture of mm -hmm. of uh, job stability. One is of course risk killing and upskilling, but in order to understand how to build those plans, innovate. Like what I want to say is that innovation is not a linear process. It's not that we are starting in A and then we are finished at B. So this risk killing and upskilling can of course. Um, include those technology aspects of artificial intelligence, quantum computing, etc. But we cannot really um, uh, expect that a person who is uh, an experienced risk manager uh, suddenly will become a cloud architect only by completing a course on on cloud architecture. And of course, you know, we cannot really compare. Uh, just finishing a training with years of experience um, as a cloud architect. But what this training can do is to open up horizons of what is possible on the cloud. So that person can use the business knowledge that is absolutely um, an asset in their organization because it's so unique with the knowledge that is provided from that training. So that combination might generate something new. But again, it's not the expectation that oh, you finish the cloud training, so now you will be a cloud architect. It's like, not really, mm -hmm. uh, but really it opens up horizons. So risk killing and upskilling um, strategy. The other one would be a very transparent communication. I know that it's a, it's a very difficult one because we usually say, oh, what what we will do if employees just massively will start leaving the company or you know just will try to to find some other jobs etc but what i've seen in the organizations the more transparent we are of course you know we are keeping the company secrets we don't want to go to the press with the kind of you know oh this company is going to hire this amount of people or reskill this amount of people etc so of course we need to be very careful but the more transparent we are the better so um, our employees do appreciate that honesty and do appreciate that we are treating them as adults and do appreciate that we are giving them time to think and to make their own decisions, whether they want to go through the risk killing, upskilling programs or um, they, they, might, they might choose differently. But this is their decision. And I think that we also need to start treating our employees as kids in the, in the, in the playground. And, uh, and to really be honest with them and transparent and start an adult conversations if there is a case that we know that those roles are going to be impacted. And usually we know that in advance, it's not something that is happening overnight. Technology implementation is one thing, adoption is another thing, and it takes time. So we know beforehand. So why we, why we cannot start this conversation? Not the minute we know, Mm -hmm. but sometime in the process of this technology adoption. And that, okay. that will lead to the third strategy, which is a redeployment strategy. Because as I said, the jobs will not disappear. And it might be that companies will even increase the number of roles they have, but they will be different. Mm -hmm. So again, that redeployment strategy might, might really work because then we are also giving that time for the employees to upskill or reskill so they can take another jobs while where they're open up. So I think that you know proactivity is of course the key key element in here, but those three strategies, mm -hmm. openness, reskilling, upskilling, and redeployment strategies are very important to, to include in the entire uh, adoption of new technologies. Lovely. And my last question for today, because we have a lot of like talks about like uh, Generation Z entering the market, like how to how to work with Gen Z, why Gen Z uh, are different. But they, they bring quite uh, unique expectations to the market, I would say, into the workplace and, and how companies can use technologies to, to make the working environment a little bit more attractive and appealing for, for the younger talents. 
Um, definitely te technology can help, but I will take a step back because technology is not the answer. I think that what we really need to focus on is to create a supporting work environment for both professional and personal development. And then we can bring technologies and then we can do a fantastic, brilliant, uh, like procreate brilliant like work environment for not only Gen Z's because probably you know there will be a lot of people also participating in it and and benefiting from from uh, from those technology deployments for employees such as for example digital onboarding like the the even going through the process of providing some documents paperwork um, access training materials or even getting to know the company policies and and culture upfront like showing. Uh, those people who are um, who are new to the organizations, uh, to the organization, what the culture, uh, what the culture looks like, or uh, what what the normal day looks like, or you know who we are, and and really like showing this human face to them, so they can see that we are not just you know a company. Of mm -hmm. course, we are here for you know for profit, etc. It's not a charity. But we are providing this supporting environment for personal and professional growth. So we might also think about mentoring and networking, networking apps, especially for larger organizations. We have that um, talent capabilities and experience built. So navigating through the corporate ladders is, is, is the crucial knowledge. And you know, we might also connect with uh, senior um, senior employees or senior managers. To get some advice, to get some tips, how to navigate through that um, that uh, uh, organization. Uh, you mentioned uh, virtual realities and augmented yeah. realities, metaverse, etc. I understand that this is a cost to the organization, but that also creates a kind of uh, uh, this creative environment, and and uh, you know that also you can provide real time feedback on the workplace experiences, etc. So, you know, but of course, you know, it has to be balanced. It cannot just be our idea what we think is right. Yeah. We also need to check and and ask them what they uh, what they would like to see. And you know, yesterday was the was the day of mental health awareness, which is of course on the agenda of Gen Z, um, the Gen Z generation. So, you know, a, a, an app or a portal for well-being is you know one of the one of the benefit they they're also um, looking for in, in their organizations. The other thing might be digital feedback systems. You know, um, initially or this traditional way of providing feedback is maybe once, maybe twice a year. And of course, it's like, how can you like give me feedback of something I did like 10 months ago, you know, and, and you know, this con continuous feedback that will support day learning process and their professional growth is also something that um, they want to see. They just don't want to like wait for this feedback for months, weeks. And um, and I think that what we also underestimate is that um, this young generation only wants to hear about how great they are. That's not mm -hmm. true. They also want to learn. And without this feedback, and of course it has to be balanced, you know, it has to be provided in a um, in a professional way, not that, you know, you are this or this or this. It's just like focused on the problem and focused on what can be changed. And, uh, and I think that this is also something that they're um, looking to get because they know that they cannot learn, they cannot grow without it. So mm -hmm. if we just let them do the same mistakes over and over again and just create a culture of frustration, then this is not going to fly. Uh, but, you know, the, the, the older generations, we are so not used to it, like providing this con constant feedback, which is like, yeah, you did great uh, the presentation at the meeting. So your comment was really, um, really beneficial to, to the entire conversation. That idea was really nice. And uh, and providing this feedback, really being open and, and 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 honest on positive elements of them, because they're trying, but they're also new yeah. to the work, to the business, um, to the industry, and they're also trying to find themselves in the entire in the entire environment. And if they don't see that support, if they don't see that they're somehow welcomed and 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 their voice is mm -hmm. is is welcomed, then they will of you know not be happy at all and they will exactly, just yeah. be completely frustrated and um, I had a chat with uh, just recently uh, with one uh, one girl who 
who is from from Gen Z, let's let's put it this way. And she had an internship in, in Siemens. Mm -hmm. And funny enough, they wanted to create the 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 products or they wanted to open up um, the market for Gen Z. Mm -hmm. But she said all of our ideas, although we are the generation that are trying to car target, all of our ideas were just shut down. Like no one wanted to listen to us. Like they had like their own concepts and they had like 50, say, uh, like 50 um, reasons to say no. Like <laughs> it's just, like risk department in, in, in the banking industry. I mean, like yeah. 50, like how to say no. And I think that they had the list and just like, so let's don't kill that spirit. Like if they're coming up with the with the ideas, of course, like that might not be the best one. That might and there is always the... risk when we do something. So <laughs> exactly, and you know, and we are talking about this with the culture of innovation and experimentation. Of course, like not all of the ideas will fly. Not all of the ideas mm -hmm. will be proven successful, and not all of the hypotheses will be amazing, and not even our prototypes will be great. So maybe let's just you know try to build the um maybe we should just focus on on trying to build a supportive supportive environment and uh, really promote promoting um feedback open communication transparency honesty yeah. um to to make sure that they feel welcome yeah, yeah, lovely, lovely. Thank you very much, Olga, for that. It was very interesting, I have to say. And uh, thank you for also being partner of Future Recruiter coming in November. So that's that's a huge, like a uh, nice message from for us that that you joined the uh, joined our sponsors. So thank you for that. And uh, yeah, like let's let's meet in November and discuss more about like innovation and the culture of innovation. And fingers crossed for for Horizon X Consulting. Thank you so much, Claudia. Absolute pleasure to uh, be here with you today and uh, always happy to share some insights from the uh, culture of innovation experimentation. I'm absolutely passionate about the topic. So anytime. Lovely. Lovely. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you.